Astronomer Frank Drake said that he thought we would make contact with extraterrestrial intelligence by the year 2000. It didn't happen, and he did not uh, live long enough to see that lifelong goal, one that he did pursue, though, tirelessly with great innovation and no guarantee, of course, of success. Liz Cook has one of the last interviews done with the great Dr. Drake. Before the pandemic shut everything down, astronomer and astrophysicist Frank Drake opened up his home to KPIX-5. I think that the discovery of extraterrestrial intelligent life will be the most important discovery perhaps ever. Frank Donald Drake began his remarkable career in the late 50s. It was a time when space exploration captured the nation's imagination. He became the leading pioneer in the search for extraterrestrial life. It will enrich our civilization in a way which is almost impossible to predict. It will be enormous. We will learn things of science, of engineering, of sociology, of ways of life, of ways of protecting the climate, of ways of perhaps even colonizing other planets of a planetary system. Among his many accomplishments, Drake is best known for devising what's called the Drake Equation. It's used to estimate the number of intelligent civilizations in our galaxy. I'm quite sure there are other sentient beings in the universe. I think in very large numbers. In 1974, Drake also beamed the first interstellar communication from Earth. It was called the Arecibo message. Uh, the Arecibo message only lasts three minutes. Uh, it only has 1,273 characters, so it's very short. And yet it describes the basic chemical makeup of the DNA molecule. It also has a sketch of a human being to give an in, a suggestion of what we are like. We sent that to a group of 300,000 stars that are about 25,000 light years away from us. And we did that for two th reasons. One was to send information about ourselves to these other worlds in that uh, far distant group of stars. At the same time, it was a message to us about what is possible. We have ignition and we have liftoff. In 1977, 45 years ago this month, NASA scientists installed a golden record onto two space probes. The disks contained dozens of images, sounds from nature, and even music from classical to Chuck Berry. Frank Drake supervised its making. This was a way of telling another civilization about us. For centuries, we've gazed up at the stars and wondered if we were all alone. If we ever find out that answer, one scientist said, we'll have Frank Drake to thank. Elizabeth Cook, KPIX 5. Well, one of the reasons Dr. Drake was so interested in whether or not we could actually receive an intelligent signal from an extraterrestrial civilization is he said, you know, it could contain an owner's manual for the universe because it would not be from a civilization that was just 50 years ahead of ours or 100 years. The overwhelming odds is that it would be a message from a civilization hundreds or thousands of years in our advance from a civilization that had not blown itself up, had learned to live long enough to be able to send out intelligent communications and say, here's the key to surviving. Here's the key to global warming. Here's the key to a lot of things. So the idea that we could get an, an owner's manual from an, an extraterrestrial civilization, that's why it'd be the story of a lifetime. Drake served as the president of the SETI Institute. He was professor emeritus at UC Santa Cruz. He died on September 2nd at his home in Aptos and leaves behind his wife, Amal, and five children.